This is your life, an American tradition with Ralph Edwards. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Can you give me an autograph, please. No, you needn't yeah, do it in pen and ink, Fitz. You can open a vein and do it in blood if you'd like. No, not mine. <laughs> yours. You're nibbing. I don't have it You're more. nibbing. I thought she might not do that. <laughs> oh, duck for me. It does look like huh? It does, but of course, you were much younger there. But these things are always flattering. They're touched up. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Hello, Vincent. Hello, how are you? Know, you? Know, Edwards, I see that you're autographing your book, A Treasury of American Art, yes, uh, Vinny. Yes, oh, yes, that's wonderful. Them them I have another book with your name on it, right on the, right on the very front cover. It says, Vincent Price, this is your I, life. I really don't <laughs> believe it. I really don't believe it. Uh, I to <laughs> Get the book and see what he did. Now, listen, you worked life. together in early days in television with Vincent Price. Oh, we worked in silent television. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was piped up through an iron pipe with an electric fan. It's and the was blown out of that. I can't believe this, you know, because all my life I thought if they ever do this to me, I'll know it. Yes, well, you're a missionary for us now. You see, you can tell people that you yeah, didn't no, know it. Well, well, what were you on together? We did a show called Pantomime Prince from Miami. Still, still, still on 47. We started it together was for one many years. First shows, really big shows on TV. Well, it was big one because as it was first, you yes, understand, yes, the standards were not too high. No, and there were only 4,000 TV sets in well, the country. Well, you guys made quite a team on that. Well, he was, well, Vincey was always, Vincey was always the most effective, most useful. I always had my lawyer with me all the time because he <laughs> insulted me. No, 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 no. But you were given you the You call me an itinerant grape pick. No, Olive. Olive. Well, that was the reason for that was that uh, he, he pretended. He was yeah. given to certain theatricalities to which I could never yeah. subscribe. No. And uh, he pre pretended on this day he was shooting Baron of Arizona. Baron of Arizona. And he pretended that he didn't have time to change his costume and he came down late in the afternoon dressed in this thing that might have been serviceable for the bad man. Yes, or a yes. remake of Blood and Sand. And I accused him of being, uh, appearing as a, an itinerant Olympic. As I recall, he was always, you know, a yeah. very graceful man. He accepted it and uh, uh, he resented it but could not deny it. So <laughs> well, now look, Hans, let's yeah. you. Uh, Vincent and I go back to our This Is Your Life uh, theater where they're waiting there, a whole group of people, to tell your story. Uh, yeah. Story of a true Renaissance man. Okay, come on, Hans, you get one. <laughs> And now, here are Ralph Edwards and a very surprised Vincent Price. Now that uh, we've disposed of that Hans Conried, we'll get on with the show, eh? It's a, it's a very dirty trick. You know? <laughs> I thought I was just having a nice autograph party down there. Oh, dear. It's wonderful. Vincent Price, your famous voice was first heard on May 27th, 1911, in St. Louis, Missouri, when you responded to the slap of the doctor who just brought you into the world. You're one of four children. At the age of 12, you show an interest in art. You buy a Rembrandt etching uh, on your allowance, Vincent, mm -hmm. or uh, how, did, how did you work that out? I stole the money out of the mite box. Oh, you did? <laughs> so we used to give it to missionaries, and I did, <laughs> decided they didn't need it anymore. <laughs> did you, but did you, uh, did you give it all at once, or was there kind of a no, there payment? Was, it it was uh, $5 down, and it was $37.50, and it took me about three years to make it. I see. Uh, art is to become an all-consuming passion with uh, you for the rest of your life. But I go back to the days when Vincent was the first to get his driver's license, and we would con him into driving us around. A voice from your high school days, Vincent, the man who moved London Bridge to Lake Havasu <laughs> in Arizona, <laughs> Mr. Robert McCulloch. Bob. Mr. McCulloch, do you uh, mean Vincent actually was your chauffeur back in St. Louis? Certainly was. Well, <laughs> we didn't have that much money then. No. We, no. We conned him to driving and we chipped in for the gas. And... He was the only guy with a license, I take it. Huh? Yeah, but I was the mechanic that had changed the tires. <laughs> Bob and I used to celebrate our, our 
birthdays which were very close to each other at the Forest Park Highlands. Exactly. <laughs> Every year. Now, uh, who paid for the gas in this deal? If it was his car and he chauffeured it around? Oh, I think that it was supposedly chipped in, mostly on tabs or credit or something. Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bob, it's wonderful. Robert McCulloch, chairman of the board of the McCulloch Oil Company. Uh, thank you very much for being here Robert. tonight. <laughs> you'll see Vince a little later. He's as tall as I am. I guess he could take care of all the gas today, yeah, couldn't he? There? Sure. Oh. Well, now, in your uh, last year in high school, you decide to become an active artist. You diligently try your hand at painting and then sculpting and finally woodcutting. At Yale, you continue your art studies. Thinks a guy that works and plays harder than any man I've ever known. I'm sure you recognize the voice. It belongs yes. to your roommate at Yale, your longtime yeah. friend, advertising executive here from Philadelphia, Ted Thomas. <laughs> I, I am the uh, godfather of his uh, youngest daughter. Yeah, yes. Yes. A couple of big yeah. fellas, I must say that. <laughs> and and Bob gentlemen. McCulloch, too. We're all large. Yes. Your friendship uh, with Vincent has uh, continued through the years, hasn't it? In spite of everything. Yes. Did anything yeah. unusual ever happen to you and your roommate <laughs> here at Yale, Ted? Yeah. Well, uh, yes. Uh, it was back in Prohibition <laughs> days. <laughs> Tell us about that, Ted. Uh, well... Uh, we, we bought a, a cask of grape juice, and this cask of grape juice had a wooden plug in the top, and it had a label. And the label said, warning, do not turn this plug one quarter to the right, or it will let in air, and it will ferment. Mm -hmm. So uh, we realized this was a, the way to do it, and we let it go. And we put it in our clothes closet, and... Uh, <laughs> what? After it got going, <laughs> it blew the cork, yes. <laughs> and the smell of sour wine nearly drove us out on the street. We had to get our clothes cleaned, and we never tried that again. Thank you, Ted Thomas. Thank, Thank you. you, Ted. You know? Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Ted. I can't believe it. You don't even realize, I think, Vincent, that Ted and your other friends waiting back there have been hiding away at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, and here you are just walking around and never knew about it. I know, I know. After graduation from Yale, you go to the University of London to get your master's degree in art, and during your second year there, with an easy school schedule, you decide to try your hand at acting. Uh, do you remember your first part? I certainly do. It was in a play called Chicago, and I had a walk-on part with no lines, but I had What'd squeaky shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I played a policeman. <laughs> yes. And next you get the male lead in Victoria Regina. Victoria Regina. Playing yes. Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's husband. Gilbert Miller, the American theatrical impresario, sees the show and what happened? He brought me over to play it with the, the greatest actress of our theater, Helen Hayes. Right. Once you make your big splash in show business, you never really get a chance to dry off. After more than two years on Broadway in Victoria Regina, you get your first starring part and your first menacing role in Angel Street. The show is an immediate hit. You get rave notices, and when Angel Street finally closes, Hollywood beckons and you come a-running. Once you start making movies, there's no stopping you. Pictures like Laura and Dragonwick, classic tales of horror and the supernatural, like Fall of the House of Usher, Dr. Fives, Pit and the Pendulum, The Oblong Box, Tales of Terror. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a dear friend. Nine killed you. Nine shall die. I will kill as many of you as I need to.